great pleasure to invite to our podium the Reverend John Sp Scott, otherwise known as the Manifestation of Love, John the Beloved, and also the rest of the service dedicated to one of the most, to me, one of my favorite people that ever lived, Winnie Mandela. With no apology, I say, one of the most touching persons to my heart. So, Reverend John, over to you. I know you will thrill us in your usual manner. Thank you. Thank you, bubbly Reverend Dr. Sonia, and good morning, friends. It's a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to another Sunday celebration here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. We are honored this morning to have worshiping with us Mr. Tyrone Gunny. I think he must have been in Jamaica for some time because he has acquired the Jamaican <laughs> soon come. Um, but we're so happy to have you had a little bit of glitch at home. Um, so he's first Secretary Political of the South African High Commission here in Jamaica. Welcome, sir. It's a, it's a joy to have you. Today's service, as you know, is a tribute to the late Winnie Madikizela Mandela, a life dedicated to freedom. And I'd like to thank Temple member Sandra Donaldson, who always likes to remain um, anonymous, but that's her over there, um, for the idea of celebrating Winnie at a Sunday service. You know, as in most closely knit communities, the Temple family is in the habit of sharing bits of information with each other. And another temple member, uh, Andre Nemhard, who is also sitting over there, uh, sent me the wonderful tribute written by uh, Nelson Mandela's widow, Grassa Machel. And I was so thrilled by it that I sent it out to all the people who I know, um, you know, are, are on that wavelength, on that level of, of vibration. And Sandra immediately replied, thanking me for sharing it and saying, why don't we have a Winnie Sunday? And I just thought, wow, we can do that. So thank you, Sandra, for that um, inspiration. And so wherever you are in the world, if you're watching our service on the World Wide Web and you believe in freedom, welcome to Winnie Sunday at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Let us affirm together Thank God for freedom. Together? Thank, Thank God for freedom. And then, I believe in freedom and am committed to it. I believe in freedom and I am committed. I'm not, I'm not at all uh, convinced. In Jamaica, we say your sound, fenke, fenke. Let me hear it with some energy. I believe in freedom and I am committed to it. So let me share with you that amazing letter of tribute from Grassa Michelle, which inspired today's celebration of Winnie Man Badikizela Mandela, who ended her assignment on this plane of activity on April 2nd, 2018, at the age of 81. I quote, it is with a heavy heart that I address you today. As I struggle to accept your transition, I take solace in the fact that you have risen to become one of the brightest stars in the sky, where you will remain ever present and radiantly shining. You will continue to serve as a guide to your loving family, your grateful nation, our beloved Africa, and indeed, the world. The extraordinary life you led is an example of resilient fortitude and inextinguishable passion and is a source of inspiration to us all of how to courageously confront challenges with unwavering strength and determination. Thank you for your brilliant wisdom, your fierce defiance, and your stylish beauty. Fortunately, stars shine brightest during the darkest of hours. I know you will continue to illuminate our sky even though the storm, even through the storms and clouds. Your legacy will be an uplifting beacon from which we can continue to draw guidance and strength during difficult times. 
You loved our people unconditionally and sacrificed so much for our freedom. It is my prayer that as befitting tributes are paid to you both at home and abroad, all of us will internalize the values you helped to mold and birth into existence. As a nation, I hope we will stand tall and proud and as uncompromising as you were in the defense and protection of our rights. As one of our brightest stars, continue to be the lioness that protects your children and your grandchildren. Warm their hearts so that while your transition may shake them, it does not break their spirit. Your legacy is everlasting. Take a well-deserved rest in peace, my big sister. Love and respect always, your little sister, Grassa. I'm not just still touching. And now we will hear from three temple members, themselves powerful women, on why they celebrate Winnie. They are, in this order, Mrs. Jean Barnes, Ms. Andre Nemhard, who, who was the person that shared that wonderful tribute from Grassa Michelle, and Ms. Lorna Phillips. Uh, so we begin with Jean. Thank you, Reverend John. Thank you, friends. You know, if it weren't that I knew that Reverend John is a great soul, uh -huh. I would think he was being very chinksy in giving us two minutes uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> to pay tribute to this great woman. Yeah. Yeah, come, come more in front of the back. Right. Okay. Whatever I know about Winnie, Madikizila, Mandela, mm -hmm. is only what I have read and heard through the news through the grapevine and through the news media. I had the honor of going with the Jamaican folk singers to South Africa, and we were in Johannesburg, and we visited her home, where she lived after she was freed. We visited Nelson Mandela's office, and it was an overwhelming experience. So, there are two words that I hold in my heart as absolutely true describe aspects of Winnie's character that should inspire us as true students to emulate. These qualities are undeniable, and the words are commitment and courage. Winnie Mandela, like every other human being in the world, made errors in her life. Everyone has. No one is exempt from error. It is part of the business of being born on the plane of the relative and existing here. But that is so temporary and unreal when we get into the real meaning of our lives. These errors that Winnie might have made cannot in any way, shape, or form detract from the superhuman Amazonian contribution which Winnie made in that epic struggle to rid South Africa of the scourge of apartheid and to secure for that great country the freedom of each and every citizen to vote for the government of his or her choice. She was absolutely committed to the struggle made by Nelson Mandela and other freedom fighters to free South Africa from that plague called apartheid and her commitment to that cause is undeniable. When she stepped out alongside Nelson on that long, hard, painful road to freedom, she committed her head, her heart, and her hands to that struggle, and she never wavered. Yes. She gave every atom of her being to that world-shattering task. She was taken from her home and children she was imprisoned, she was beaten, she was humiliated in the most degrading ways, denied human contact and association with her children, and she never wavered. She's a shining example to us here in relative, relatively comfortable Jamaica that we should be committed to the practice of the truth that we say we believe in. Amen. 
and that's the real path to freedom. We must be as committed as Winnie Mandela to put into practice the declaration of principles that we say we accept and take into our heads, our hearts, and our hands. It's a long, hard road, but if we truly believe, we will undertake that journey. And you may rest assured, it will result in greater peace, love, harmony, health, wealth, and happiness. Believe me, it can be done. And if we are to make heaven come on earth, as that magnificent prayer that our Father promises when it says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we must undertake the same journey that Winnie embarked on, and we will be assured of success. I told you that there are two words that come to mind. The other one is courage. She has got to be one of the most courageous women in the world to have undergone the ordeal she suffered. She must have often thought of throwing in the towel. Our physical bodies, our hormonal structure, resulting emotional natures, cause us as women to recoil from, from pain. And I may mean, not be speaking for everybody, I'm speaking for myself. The thought of pain is very abhorrent to me both in mind and body. But look here. Childbirth is painful and we continue to have children. <laughs> so we are strong. Winnie, to realize her great dream, bore the pain and suffering in her great commitment to freedom. She must have been afraid. She had to be afraid. But she dealt with it, and so her courage was born. There's a man called Phineas Quimby, Phineas Quimby is the author of the Quimby Manuscripts. And he, he was the one who taught us about mental and spiritual healing. And all the metaphysicians that came after based a lot of their teachings about healing on Quimby. And Quimby says, courage requires an appreciation of danger. There is no courage where there is no danger. If I am not afraid and I do something, where's the courage? I didn't know. I didn't appreciate it. I didn't anticipate it. So I just do it. No courage there. Danger is that which calls out fear. So you're afraid. All the people whom I have listened to on receipt of their medals and their Victoria Cross and their Congressional Medal of Honor and so on, said they were afraid. Without fear, there is no courage. Danger calls out fear, and courage is the element to face it. So, my two minutes are almost up. <laughs> if Winnie can do it, so can we. I love you. If Winnie can do it, so can we. The teachings we hear at this beautiful Center for Spiritual Living help to make this world a better place, but it takes courage. Courage to be authentic with ourselves, not to pretend. To become and to remain steadfast in our determination to succeed. Bite the bullet. Go to the classes. Religious science is a teaching you can come here every Sunday morning and listen and you have a feel-good thing and it's lovely. Oh boy, it's so, oh you just feel so great and wonderful. But to understand, to apply it, seven days, 24 hours a day, you have to get the teaching. Um, when I came back from England in 1981, I went to work at the office of the Prime Minister and I undertook the three-year class. I had a full-time job. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I, I didn't even think about next week. I just said, signing up today. And for three years, I came to the classes because I committed myself to it, because this teaching was so liberating. It was so wonderful. It was so loving. It was so everything I'd always wanted that there was nothing that was going to stop me from doing it. And so I committed myself to doing it. So it takes courage. Every day, every day, there's an exam. We have an exam every day. We, sell up, we do our meditation, we do our treatments, and we set forth for the world. And the first exam that comes, we fail it. Me, I know. 
The first exam where I'm supposed to exercise patience, I get so rotted in patience that, and I say, well, you failed that one again. <laughs> but, but, but we press on. We have to go to the classes. We have to devote our time and energies to understanding exactly what our great founder and teacher taught. Every day this exam is here. We have challenges from our family, our friends, our workmates, the world in general. Because how can you be sick and say, I am in perfect health? I say it every day. I'm in perfect health. How can we be, be saying that? People say you're mad. You cough, you, you can't move, and you're talking about you're in perfect health. Because the I am is what we're focusing on, not the what I appear to be. Because everything that is negative is an appearance. There are two words that helped me to understand this when I did Latin. I don't think they do it anymore. To be, and it is in all languages except English, to be and to appear to be. The word for to be temporary, to be an appearance, is estar in Spanish. Essentially, to be genuinely is ser. So essentially, essentially is what we're talking about. The essence of things, not the appearance of things. And we learn that in our classes. We have to practice this. Practice makes the exam easier, but it takes courage. So just remember what Minnie Mandela had to suffer and how courageously she walked the talk. It's not all talking, it's walking the talk. We must accept the challenge to free ourselves from discord of every kind, change our minds and change our lives. We already have the courage within us and let it shine. The great universe, life, God, supports all our efforts. It turns to us as we turn to it. But if we don't turn to it, it's not going to turn to us. Okay? Remember, Winnie Mandela's courage is the courage of God. And it is our courage right here and right now. Thank you. Why I celebrate Winnie. One of my greatest, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Great. One of my greatest delights was to learn of the honorary Doctor of Laws degree that was conferred on Winnie Madikizila Bandela in January of this year by the University of Makerere, Uganda, for her anti apartheid work. I was so thrilled. I'm glad that this happened, not posthumously, but a few months before she died. I call myself a leadership development coach, and until fairly recently, I had the privilege of teaching a course called Transformational Leadership at Mona School of Business. One of the requirements of the course is for participants to work in teams of three to analyze and present on a transformational leader of their choosing. However, as no two teams can present on the same leader, invariably there is a mad dash to select Nelson Mandela, who is regarded as um, the preeminent leader of our time. In doing the research, however, before too long, the students would realize that they had to study Winnie Mandela as well, because they were inseparable when it comes to the fighting, the, um, fighting apartheid. Indeed, Although Nelson Mandela never failed to remind us that he was a flawed human being, his enduring lessons of forgiveness, dignity, personal integrity, moral courage, fortitude, humility, and grace might not have become seared in our consciousness had it not been for Willie. I don't know how many of you attended, even vicariously, his memorial services. But you, if you did, you would have heard the term Ubuntu several times. This term, he did not coin this term. This term was around long before Nelson Mandela, but he made us aware of it. It is now a part of the leadership lexicon. Ubuntu, which means I am human because I belong. I am because you are. 
So, Winnie helped to make us aware of all of these things. Just think of it. Winnie and Nelson were married in 1958 and remained married for 38 years. For 27 of those years, Nelson was in prison. Winnie became the public image of apartheid, anti-apartheid, representing him to the world. When Mandela was sent to Robben Island in 1962, in expressing her resolve to continue the work, she said, and I quote, they think because they have put my husband on, a, on an island, he will be forgotten. They are wrong. The harder they try to silence him, the louder I will become. And was she loud? No, was she loud? The entire world heard her. We cannot forget, as Jean pointed out, thank you, Jean, do that. She, she was jailed in 1969, when, before dawn in May, um, she was removed, dragged out of her home. But prisoner number 132369, who remained incarcerated for 491 days, would not be silenced. The journals she kept while in jail are now captured in her book, 491 Days in Jail. We know that Winnie was not without flaws, but we cannot have those flaws define her, nor take, her, nor take, a, um, nor take away from the, her accomplishments in the 82 years of her short life. Who remembers John 8, verse 7? Let the one who has never seen throw the, the first stone. Winnie was passionate and vulnerable, and Reverend John, those are the two words. Passionate and vulnerable. One of my favorite writers, Brené Brown, tells us in her masterpiece, Daring Greatly, that vulnerability is the core of all human emotions and feelings. To feel is to be vulnerable, to foreclose on our emotional life out of fear that the cost will be too high is to walk away from the things that give us purpose and meaning to live in. Vulnerability, she tells us, is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy, accountability, and authenticity. I celebrate Winnie for all of the above, especially for her passion and vulnerability. Thank you. Good morning, Temple family. Good morning, Lord. Okay, wow. You know, um, when Reverend John asked me if I would be one of the three sisters who would um, give a tribute to Winnie, of course I said yes. In fact, I think I said something like, uh, yes, 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 a thousand times yes. She, I adore that woman, something like that, I said. So, um, like many of you, I'm a professional, I'm very busy, and so this past week or so has been exceedingly busy. I just came back from Toronto um, from a trip and then... Um, yesterday was the first time I had an opportunity to even think about today and of course at that point I thought oh my goodness why on earth did I say yes so quickly so here I am with a very horridly put together little something but as I was thinking about Winnie I asked myself what is it about her or what is it about anyone in fact that makes them stand out what is it about a human being that makes them so victorious, such a, a, a player on the world stage? Why Winnie Mandela? Did she have some unique gifts that the rest of us don't have? Um, was it ordained somehow? Or is it that her fate was sealed when she married Nelson? Well. I'll leave you to ponder what you think the reasons might be. And I'll share with you some of the reasons that, for me, she's deserving of such accolades. Firstly, I think of Winnie Madikizela Mandela 
as a warrior for truth. Her extraordinary commitment to the liberation of a people. Trained in espionage, she was a shrewd political activist, and her underground recruitment activities for the ANC, as well as her connection to her own powerful history, helped me to realize and redefine the struggle as a struggle for elevated consciousness. Not one of personal gain, or position, or even race for that matter, as we are often hearing um, the struggle defined as one of race. Because if you think about it, that the consciousness of the oppressor and the victim is locked into a relationship of enslavement, one with another. And so the goal really is to transcend the consciousness of both the oppressor and the victim. And so when Winnie spoke of liberation, it was for the liberation of a country, a people, not just her people, the Khuzas, but all of South Africa people, and by extrapolation, all people all over the world. Secondly, her fierce unwillingness to succumb mentally and to retain perspective and focus in the face of relentless pressure is deserving of admiration. As Andre said, she was torn from her home by security police in the wee hours of the morning in front of her two small girls, which for any mother is heartbreaking. Held in solitary confinement and denied all contact with the outside world, including knowing where her children were, whether they were all right, or who might be taking care of them. Suffering repeated interrogations and all sorts of affronts to her, to her dignity, Winnie would understandably experience melancholy at times. And yet, she could still muster feisty responses when the prison psychiatrist would say something absurd like, I've come to find out how we can help you to solve your problems. <laughs> you look so depressed and strained. Or, we are here to help you. We understand how you feel, Mrs. Mandela. Where are your children? And who looks after them now that you are here? At one time, she pointed the psychiatrist in the direction of her jailers, indicating that they needed her services more than she. <laughs> And one can only wonder about the intense cruelty behind the questions of Winnie about her children when, of course, they knew exactly what the answers were. At times, she elected not to respond or she would laugh out loud until eventually drawing the interview to a close, refusing to answer any more ridiculous questions. Oh, she was mad all right, but definitely not insane. Winnie Mandela was determined to be her own woman, not defined by her husband. After Nelson's incarceration, she committed herself that she was not going to bask in her husband's shadow and be known as Mandela's wife. She had her own mind. This great granddaughter of a powerful warrior chief, Madiki Zelo, would claim her own identity. In her words, I'm going to be who my father taught me to be. I'm going to walk tall. Her femininity and respect for her body temple famously demonstrated itself in her elegant attire. And so I have attempted in my way to channel her exquisite taste oh, with this dress and headpiece. <laughs> yes. which reflects the style of the Khuza Zula people from which Winnie hailed, made with fabric from Ghana and designed and made by my good friend, Sandra Thompson. And so lastly, but in many ways, most dramatically, she demonstrated that strength, defiance and courage can meet dignity, grace and elegance. Winnie Madikizela Mandela was all woman mother, wife, and liberation fighter. 
an icon of the 20th century South Africa, Winnie has left an indelible mark upon the world and upon my consciousness. Namaste. Wow. Ooh, I have to exhale. Committed and courageous, vulnerable and passionate, a warrior for truth, strength, defiance, and courage, meeting grace. And we have seen it this morning. You know, my, my late dad, um, he was a, a, a tiny man, very slender. We called him Big John. And whenever he was asked his opinion after my mother Daisy had spoken, usually at length, on any subject, he would often say, well, um, speaking as a mere man, so thank you, Jean, Andre, Jean, Andre, uh, Lorna, uh, speaking as a mere man. Um, I wanted just to share, it'll have to be brief now, then box the whole of my time out my mouth, but that's fine, it was worth it, it was wonderful. Let's give another round of applause. In the very first chapter of the very first page of the Science of Mind textbook written by Ernest Holmes, the founder of this great teaching, Holmes writes, and I quote, the divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God-ordained. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. All instinctively feel this. The truth points to freedom on the law. Thus, the inherent nature of man is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. We do well to listen to this inner voice, for it tells us of a life wonderful in its scope, of a love beyond our fondest dreams, of a freedom which the soul craves. End of that Ernest Holmes quote. You know, friends, in our courses titled Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life at the, in the correctional services, uh, both the female and male correctional uh, facilities here in Kingston, one of the classes, of the, of the 12 classes which each cohort uh, attends, one of those classes is dedicated to giving the participants an opportunity to focus on what is their most desired thing? So it's a question that says, what is your most desired thing? And as you might well imagine, their most, the most desired thing for many, many, many people in, that are incarcerated is, of course, freedom. And that invariably leads to a discussion about the meaning of freedom. Because Reverend Michael Record, who, who works with, with along, co-facilitates along with me at the Tower Street Men's Facility, and Reverend Anne Shand and, and Carol Charlton, sitting with Mr. Gunny this morning, who works at the female facility, always have to lead them, or usually lead them, to, to the understanding that there are people who are in prison outside. Because blame, shame, and regret keep a lot of us locked inside in a way that is, is even more terrible than the concrete, the, the brick walls, and